So this video is going to be about the stages of meiosis. So meiosis, generally before we uh, go deeper, is just the reduction of the number of chromosomes from diploid to haploid, and that process is divided into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So in these pictures right here, we can kind of see what's going on. So we have homologous chromosomes in the diploid parent cell. We're going to replicate it so that each chromosome has a sister chromatid. They're going to separate to become haploid cells during meiosis 1, and then from there, they'll go on to make these four different haploid cells. So moving on to the first stage of meiosis. So like I said, it's split into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, so our first stage is going to be prophase 1. And so in this stage, we're starting as a diploid cell with homologous chromosomes um, pairing up. So the centrosome movement, so that's going to be the centrosomes moving to opposite sides of the cell, which would be right here. We're going to have our spindle formation, which we talked about in a video in chapter 12. We're going to have our nuclear envelope start to break down. Um, and then we're also going to have these chromos uh, chromosomes condensing. And so uh, during prophase 1 is when we have crossing over. So crossing over is going to be the exchange of genetic information between two non-sister chromatids. And so when we have crossing over, the locations where crossing over actually occurs are going to be called chiasmata. And so right here, we can see this crossing over taking place. So we would be exchanging a portion of this purple chromosome with a portion of this maroon chromosome. And then where the, the, that switch took place, we would form a chiasmata. So moving on to metaphase 1. So we're going to have our homologous chromosomes lined up at the metaphase plate. So that's what's going on here. And again, right here, we can see this uh, chiasmata because of crossing over. And then one homolog is going to attach to a microtubule from one pole. And then the other homolog is going to attach from a microtubule from the opposite pole. So we can see that right here, that coming from this pole attaches on this side and from this pole on this side. So anaphase 1. So anaphase 1 is when we're going to have a chromatid cohesion uh, breakdown. And so those are going to be our cohesin proteins that are going to be breaking down between these uh, homologous chromosomes so that now they can actually be pulled apart. So we're going to separate our homologous chromosomes. And so one homologous pair will move to one end of the cell and another will move to the opposite end of the cell. And then our sister chromatids are going to move to the same pole because these sister chromatids are still attached to one another. So in anaphase 1, it's the homologous chromosomes that separate and not the sister chromatids. So moving on to telophase 1 and cytokinesis. So during this process, we're going to get the formation of a cleavage furrow um, in animal cells. And so that will be right here where we uh, have these cells beginning to be pinched in two. And in this cleavage furrow, we're going to have a contractile ring of actin and myosin filaments that's going to contract and actually split that cell in two. Um, and so also during this uh, phase of meiosis, we have our new nuclear envelopes forming. So we can see that right here around these two separate um, nuclei. Uh, and we have the formation of two haploid cells. And so moving on to meiosis 2, we just finished up with meiosis 1. So now we move on to prophase 2. And so we have a pretty similar process to prophase of mitosis. And so at this stage, though, these cells are both haploid, whereas in mitosis, the cells are usually diploid. So during prophase 2, we have our spindle formation again. We're going to have our chromosomes recondensing. We're going to have our nuclear envelope break down again. Um, and then we can move on to metaphase. So in metaphase 2, chromosomes um, are going to line up again at the metaphase plate. But in metaphase 2, it's the sister chromatids that line up at the metaphase plate instead of the homologous pair. And these sister chromatids are no longer genetically identical, which we can see right here, because crossing over has taken place, and so it's changed one of the sister chromatids. And so um, our kinetosaurs are then also going to attach to the microtubules. So remember, a kinetosaur is this area right here at the center of this X-like structure. And we can see that that has connected to uh, microtubules from the centrosomes. So in anaphase 2, what's um, different from anaphase 1 is that in anaphase 2, now it's our sister chromatids being pulled apart instead of our homologous chromosomes. So our chromatids are going to move towards opposite poles of the cell. 
And so the chromatids, uh, this part, it can be a little tricky when we're thinking about meiosis, but now each of these chromatids is considered an individual chromosome. Um, and so that's something that's really important to remember is that they are now their own chromosome. So lastly, we'll have telophase two and cytokinesis. So again, we have the reformation of these nuclei um, and the nuclear envelopes. We have the decondensation of these chromosomes. So the chromosomes start to relax and uh, unwind a little. And then finally, the last uh, product of meiosis is going to be these four haploid cells that will result from um, the completion of telophase and cytokinesis. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.